What's up, everyone? <laughs> We're back. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. I'm Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. This is out of order for some mm -hmm. reason. Anyway, we're shooting live from uh, one of our consult rooms here. So let us know if you like the background setup here. Today, we are going to be talking about styes. So styes can be really frustrating. They come up out of nowhere, they interrupt your life, and then your eye looks swollen and red. But we'll talk about what these are, what you can do for them. Should you be squeezing them with your Q-tips like Ameliasis? We'll go into all of that today. So all things related to sty live from my office. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. A sty. What is it? Okay, styes are actually broken into two categories. It can either be a calasian or a hordeolum. We're specifically gonna be talking about hordeolum because in this video, that's what you see and that's what most people experience. Calasians are completely different in the sense that they're actually more chronic, hard inflammation, whereas hordeolum is actually a bacterial, acute bacterial infection of one of the glands within the eyelid margin, right? So the ones that you experience that are painful and they show up out of nowhere and then they disappear within a few weeks, those are hordeolum and they're usually caused by bacterial infection, specifically the staph bacteria. Now this is one of the interesting things and we'll go down this rabbit trail at some point in this video. But what are the glands that are being it's involved? It's not a rabbit here? trail. It's it's what? It's a rabbit hole. It is a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go down this rabbit hole follow the deer trail. There's a trail somewhere. Uh, but what are these glands that are being involved in your eye? And they're actually none other than your sebaceous and oil glands, and then even perhaps a modified apocrine gland like we find in the groin and the armpit. Right, so usually the mabomian glands or the glands of Zeiss or the glands of Maul that occur along the eyelid margin. Now this is worth noting because from an anatomical perspective, there'll be arguments about whether or not your retinoids can cause dry eye. And theoretically they can. Now most people will not experience this problem. It's gonna be more people that are prone to dry eye already. And what ends up happening is that retinoids decrease oil production. And if they get close enough to those mabomian glands, they could potentially decrease oil secretions on the eyelid margin and potentially cause dry eye. It's not something I don't think most people have to worry about, but it's just something worth considering. Exactly. <clears throat> Sorry, exactly. Now there was one study that showed there was a pretty high incidence of people in the small study that developed it. I would say that really doesn't relate to what I see in real life. Um, although we do see dry skin, even from dry eyes with oral retinoid therapy, I just, I rarely, if ever see it or have people discuss that with me when I see them in the office. So I think people with confidence, you can use this safely, but be aware that it is possible. Right, and if you're on a retinoid and you're noticing dry eye, worth talking to your ophthalmologist or your dermatologist about it because it could potentiate dry eye. So it's just worth knowing the anatomy and how these products work. And then you can actually deduce what the side effects may be and then alter based on that. And that's what we try to do on this channel. All right, now that we have decided that yes, we have oil glands in our eyes, perhaps a retinoid could make them dry out or at least for some people, now we go back to this hordeolum where this horde of bacteria, that's how I remembered it in medical school, that's like good. gets in the uh, gland and causes a problem. Right. So basically what ends up happening is that that gland usually drains onto the surface. And if that duct between the gland and the skin gets obstructed, you end up getting a buildup of bacteria behind that. It's almost how all infections occur. <laughs> that's how acne occurs essentially as well. And so staphylococcus bacteria gets backed up into this, it gets swollen. And now your goal is essentially we need to get this thing to drain in order for it to resolve, right? And so that's why our first treatment is not poking it with two Q-tips, but actually using warm compresses two to three times a day for about 15 minutes each session to help influence that drainage through the gland. And, you know, sometimes people have underlying conditions associated with this. So people with rosacea might be more prone to this because there is a form of ocular rosacea as well as a cutaneous component. Also people who have really bad seborrheic dermatitis or inflammation from a yeast that's on our skin or else might be more prone to this. Or people using very heavy occlusives in and around the eyes might also contribute to this. So if that's a contributing cause, if you have any of those underlying things, treating those might also help resolve the issue or at least prevent it from coming back. And the other thing to consider is how is that bacteria bacteria being introduced into the gland in the first place. So, you know, all of us have bacteria that we come in contact with, so you can't completely avoid this. But sometimes your makeup products, your mascaras, your eyeliners can be colonized with this bacteria. So if you're noticing you're getting recurrent styes along the eye all of a sudden, it could be your makeup products that are harboring that, or you could be carrying that staph bacteria inside the nose, and you may have to have your dermatologist treat the inside of your nose with an antibiotic ointment to help get rid of that carriage of that bacteria. So it's just something to think about if you're getting those recurrent styes. Right, and so just like Dr. Shaw was saying about the antibiotics, if it doesn't go away with 
with the warm compresses, then you might also need to see your doctor about getting some topical antibiotics or perhaps even oral antibiotics for some people because if you get rid of the bacteria that's really perpetuating this, it might help your body just calm down and clean up the rest. Now, with that also being said, you could really screw yourself up here because if you pop this, so look, look, we just said there's bacteria in this gland. And if you go to pop this, just like with a cyst, just like with acne, you can spread and force this bacteria deeper into the skin. And just like we've talked about with zits on the nose, this area can be filled with valveless venous drainage and it can really cause significant severe infections from preceptal to cellulitis to perhaps cavernous sinus thrombosis. So treat this area gently. Yes, this is a very dangerous area to get infections. So you definitely wanna be careful with that. There may be a point where you actually do need to have it drained by a doctor. This is where you're gonna to wanna to see, usually not us, you're gonna to wanna to see an ophthalmologist for this and they can actually drain these safely and also treat you with antibiotics to make sure that that infection does not spread. But I don't necessarily recommend doing this at home. That being said, the two Q-tip technique, good technique. No, you're just you're just drawing from your positive experience from Milia. No, I just like <laughs> it because you're not, you know, you're not like two clean Q-tips. Uh, I mean, phenomenal. Okay. Fair, fair. It's better than probably most alternatives. Right. So not a bad technique. Don't recommend doing this at home. I will say that in my experience, about 90% of these will resolve just with warm compresses and time. So you usually don't have to do anything or get too worked up about it, but they're super frustrating when they do occur because they set you back a little bit. And I have a few videos of TikTok of me having a sty in those videos because it happens to all of us. It does. I get the problem, part of the problem is hand hygiene. So just make sure you're washing your hands after you go to the bathroom. Bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> like working. <laughs> See, just touched his eyes. What did I tell you? Yeah, so that's how you take care of styes. Um, usually warm compresses do the trick. I've heard a hack where people can actually like warm up those like rice bags and also use them on the eye. That's another way to do it to just encourage drainage. So wash your hands. I'm not gonna argue with you on that one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. That's how we take care of styes. That's it. We appreciate you always. See you in the next video.